So welcome everybody to another podcast here. This is Mike and Mason's P Car Podcast, where we talk about Porsche news and we geek out here for just a little bit. The plan is to do two of these a month. So this is our second one, second episode. I know I'm excited to do this. We've upgraded our setup just a little bit. So here we are. That's right. We have an upgraded <laughs> mics and upgraded location. <laughs> yeah. Is it okay to tell people where we're at? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we're at uh, we're inside the conference uh, room of Porsche Irvine. Yes. That's why we have this lovely backdrop here. Uh, the all-conquering 918 Spider. Mm-hmm. So we get to have that uh, in our podcast, and the room is actually really good for it too. So yes, excited to see how this turns out. It's very, very quiet, so <coughs> I'm excited. So today we're going to be covering just a couple topics. I think first off, some of you may have seen on March 11th, there is a launch for a new Taycan. So what do you think about that, Mike? What do you think it's going to be? It's coming up here in only a couple days. So I, I didn't know what it was. That was a surprise to me. I mean, I saw the the posting on social media about the lap record for the new Taycan, but I didn't know they had a Turbo GT Taycan slated to be launched. I guess they want to try to take it to Plaid uh, to see uh, keep up with in that race. For sure. It looks like the lap times are what, seven seconds, or excuse me, seven minutes, seven seconds at the Nuremberg ring, which is incredible, Mm. considering this beast right over here was at a 657. It's only Mm -hmm. 10 seconds behind, which is, I would say, pretty incredible. That's crazy. I don't remember off the top of my head what the plaid time is. Do you remember, Mike? I don't. Don't usually follow Tesla. (laughs) Neither do I. (laughs) That's why this is the P-Car podcast, not the Tesla (laughs) podcast. (laughs) I'm so, sure it's got to be better than the Tesla, otherwise they wouldn't, they wouldn't have announced is. anything. I'm sure. <laughs> I'll take a look and see if we can. Um... I am excited to see what it looks like, though. I mean, just because they show the silhouette uh, with the little wing on the back, like yeah. it looks like a fixed wing. Which looks pretty cool. Yeah. That, um, and I can only imagine that they have some side skirt things going on, maybe a different front fascia. Yes. It's so all exciting. Cool. And I'm sure it's going to be more than a, a thousand horsepower because now the Turbo S is almost a thousand. So I'm sure yep. this is going to be up. And in terms of that lap time for the Plaid, they did a seven minutes thirty five seconds. So mm-hmm. Porsche has pretty much smashed it by twenty eight seconds. If yep. it is in fact a seven minute seven second lap time, so yeah. it's pretty nuts. But you know, it's all. I mean, you're talking about a car that is not going to be driven like that every day. True. Uh, is, I'm I'm thinking just for bragging rights, uh, but I'm sure the rest of the dynamics of the car will be amazing mm-hmm. to go along with that Nurburgring time for sure. Um, because you know you'll you'll do that as a party trick to show your friends how <laughs> yeah. fast it can go. Well, they didn't even say anything about the zero to sixty, did they? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to be probably sub two seconds. I mean, like the Taycan Turbo no. S is now sub two. I would think so because the, the <clears throat> Turbo S is two point three. Wow. So I would – or maybe two seconds. I'm, I think guessing, it's... <laughs> I'm guessing like 2-1. <laughs> okay. Sub a two seconds. I mean, I, I can see – you see Tesla, they have like with the Roadster, they're going to put like 1. the 9. SpaceX yeah. package on it with like little blasters. No, they say one second. You're kidding. <laughs> no. Oh, Zero to wow. 60 in one second. Yeah. So I, I think that would make me sick. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> I think I'm right with you, Mike. I think uh, – It'll be it'll be incredible, needless to say. So yeah. I I know I'm excited. Of course, it's got like the new battery pack, which we talked about last time. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty excited because we'll be seeing those cars, I'm sure, at some point, and it's going to take the same GT car heritage with a fixed wing. So yep. first Taycan to do that, which is pretty yeah. cool. And I bet you it'll be at training too when we go uh, to training. I'm sure it will. That'd be really cool too. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know or didn't li- listen to our last podcast, I'm actually a Porsche sales consultant here at Porsche Irvine. Mike is a Porsche pro. He's been doing that for at least, I think, two years now, Mike. Mm-hmm. So we've got a decent amount of experience. I was a service advisor first and then a sales consultant. So I've kind of wet my whistle on both sides of the business, and uh, here we are. So yep. we're going to be having a like dealer launch trainings probably sometime – do you remember what Summertime, time? Summertime, he said. I think it's like May or June, something yeah. like that. Apparently, we're supposed to be going to Texas somewhere and driving the new Macan, probably the new Taycan. 
most likely the new 992 replacement, 992.2. So that'll be fascinating. That car, I'm sure, is going to be getting launched here pretty soon. So yeah. what do you think about the 911 potentially going hybrid, Mike? Uh, it doesn't bother me. I, only because I've we've been in a hybrid Panamera. Mm-hmm. And you can't tell it's a hybrid. You just know it's fast. True. So fast. I think it's going to be the same thing. People, people are going to be, just because it's a hybrid, going to be like, eh, but I think just getting in it and seeing the added performance, especially in a four-wheel drive version of it. Yeah. Imagine. Like it's going to be a crazy. Th- electric motor on the front and then uh, the rear-wheel drive of a 911. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be insane. Yeah, I think it, uh, just to say that you have um, – a non-hybrid 911 will be like the, oh, yeah, mine's not, mine's mm-hmm. like original, just like it was, I'm sure, going from air-cooled to water-cooled. Right. But then after getting into it and seeing the benefits of having the water-cooled car and how much more power they can get out of it, it'll be like, this just normal. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like a baby 918. Absolutely. Almost like 10 years later. Totally. Which is pretty incredible. <laughs> that car had almost 900 horsepower, and yep. we'll see what these 911s can pop out. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be similar. Yep. Considering the Turbo S is already 640 without electric. Yep. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be awesome. Can't so. wait. Uh, speaking of Texas, uh, have you seen the new Texas dealership that just launched? I think it's, um, uh, is it Austin? Porsche Austin? I think I've seen that one. It's like six stories. Uh, just oh, maybe seeing, I haven't. Yeah, it's crazy. It, I saw videos on social media about it, um, and it looks like an insane insanely huge dealership wow it, i mean it looks like that. it's literally like three times the size of our, our store really yeah that's it's nuts huge. they have like a floor for new a floor for pre-owned <laughs> cafes on each floor yeah like under or like un, you know like a remember um the vault down in in when at we the went peterson down museum the Sa- no no the vault at that other porsche store we went down in san diego santa clarita yeah no not santa clarita at the one down south that you and I went to to see your friend, the uh, poor, uh, Hohen. Hohen. You know, I had the it's, vault in yes. there. With all, it had like one of those in For there sure. with a bunch of collector cars yeah. and race cars, and yep. it was insane. I'm not, I would, so anyway, I was thinking, I wonder if that's where we're going to go for training because it looks big enough to house like training facilities. That's like pretty that. cool. That would be way cool. That'd be super cool. Yeah, we're going to be finding out soon enough, <laughs> which is exciting. Yep. <laughs> I'm pretty hyped on that. Is there any other, like, Porsche news that you wanted to bring up before we maybe get into a couple other topics? No, just the uh, only thing I was thinking of is um, how Porsche got 123 in Qatar or mm-hmm. Qatar for the opening round of the WEC season. Uh, that was really cool. And I thought it was really interesting that, okay, so Penske Motorsport, they're the factory. That's the work considered the works team. Okay. And then they have uh, a few other teams that they sell customer cars to and one of them is joda which is the singer the the singer sponsored car didn't know and that finished second so it finished ahead of another works team which just to me is just like man porsche they just build a great product to give that they're not saying that oh this is like the b team it's like it is on the same level as the works team oh wow i didn't know that yeah so i thought uh, that was I thought it was super cool that, that is a, cool that a customer car came in a, ahead of one of the worst. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one, two, three, and that was with the nine sixty three. <laughs> yep. And so. then in the same race in the in the GT three class, Mante Racing mm-hmm. came in first, probably with the GT three R. Yep. Yeah. GT three R. There we go. So Porsche's killing it yep. as they tend to do, which yep. is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's no, a, yeah, that's super cool. I had no idea. Yeah. So. Is there any other? I think it's I think it's hard with the endurance racing. I mean, it's an important race and an important uh, season because yeah. that's what Porsche is about: endurance and going fast. It's just hard as a spectator to commit yourself to an eight-hour race mm-hmm. or a twelve or a twenty-four-hour race. A lot to watch that. It's Le mostly Mans, exactly Daytona. You're mostly going to watch the highlights. Yes. Unless you're like hardcore, you know somebody there or something like <laughs> right. that. It'd be cool to go to one of those races. That would be fun. Hang out. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe you could you know, hook up one of the guys you know. You, you know a guy that could get us in. Yes. Watch it. Watch it <laughs> For <race>. sure. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that, those of you who don't know or didn't watch the last episode, Mike has quite the TikTok. He's getting very popular on his Michael Rusnak TikTok, or is it Mike Rusnak? I can't Mike. remember. 
micro yeah. snacks. You guys yeah. could sh- definitely check that out for Porsche content that he's posting. Also, cars plug. that we have here. Plug. That yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do the plug, right? <laughs> and uh, any current cars that we have that maybe are exciting, he's also putting those on there. So, yeah. Yeah. always can check that out. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any other striking news that we can talk about opposed to the last episode. We talked about the Macan EVs. Mm-hmm. We talked about the new Tycon. Maybe I have what a we were question about it. those. Yes. Let's hear it. How is – so that we've been hearing about that for so long, mm-hmm. and now that it's officially launched and now we have allocate – or do we ha- not have allocation spots? For the Macans? Yeah. We do. We do. We have we open do. allocations. People can actually put down a deposit and, and build, build a car. And and yep. So how is that going with demand? Very popular so far. So then why do we still have open allocations? What do you mean? You said we have allocations. So we had allocations, <coughs> but all of them have been filled. Oh, that's the, okay. That's yeah. what I wanted to know. Yep. Yeah. So I think we have like 14, something like that, Macan 4 EV right. allocations already all filled up. Okay. And then we've also got um, a lot fewer Macan turbos, and those are already filled up as well. Oh, good. So. Those of you who are looking at the new Macan EV, you should probably maybe go more for the Macan 4. It's said that Porsche is not going to be building as many of the turbo variant. So if you want to get a car a lot faster, I would recommend people go to Macan 4. And what's the wait time in those for us? Um, the first couple cars, customer cars, I think, arrive sometime in September. Oh, wow. Okay. So and th- still as 24s. Still as 24s. Interesting, because September, that's when the next model year switches over. So yeah. do you think they're going to st- be all labeled as 24s through the end of 24? I wouldn't or do be you surprised. Think they'll start to... Maybe the last month or two, they'll switch over. Mm. Those are allocation month, I think, June or July. Right. So, and then our first demos are going to be here in July 12th, I think is the estimate. Oh, okay. And we can't sell those till the end of the year. Mm. But So do you think that those will be... Like people will put a deposit and hold on those as well? Or do you think it'll be like, no, nope, no deposits, just when we can sell them, they're for sale? I think that's how it'll be. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. Very good. So, and then we've also got Tycons coming in a lot sooner than we thought, too. 2025 Tycons are supposed to come in, I think, in June or July, which is really early for a model year change to already be coming in as by 25s? summer. As 25s? By 25. No, but they're listed as twenty model year 25? They're listed as oh, 25s okay. if you go into the online. Uh, right. Like handling board, yeah. Interesting. So, but all we've got is rear wheel drive. We don't have anything else yet. Oh wow! Only tight rear wheel drive allocations. What about Panamera allocations? Um, we have Panamera rear wheel drive and Panamera four, but that's it. So none of the E hybrid, no, uh, or the four E or the S. Not yet. E hybrid. Those are coming turbo? soon. Not for the turbo, no turbo either. Oh wow! No turbo allocations. Only rear wheel drive and four wheel drive, mm. or all wheel drive. Yeah. That's interesting. That's all we've got so far. So I've had in my social media post uh, just uh, comes to mind that people have been asking, like, what is – what's the process for ordering a build or an allocation? What is the – what are the steps that have to happen in order yeah. to get into a build allocation? Got it. I would say you have to have your build or your build code of some kind, whether you did it at home or you did it with the salesperson. Typically, a deposit is something that would then be taken, depending on each dealership if it's refundable or not. And then, um, and when they take that deposit, is it just they hold your card, or they actually take the money? Actually, take the money. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of the process. I think each dealership does it a little bit differently, but All that's right. how we do it. Okay. Yeah. And then once you once you have that build and you have the allocation, your name gets plugged in and it's on the board. And you're good to go. Okay. And then on most models, you can do Porsche Track My Dream where you can mm. see where the car is and oh, okay. you can get updates. Not on all model line. Gonna, I think everything, but I don't know if the Macan has Porsche Track My Dream, but I think everything else does, mm. which is yeah. cool. So then you get emails and you can see where your car's done and you get photos and all kinds of stuff. How is the uh, have the photos been coming in quicker and more lately than they were during the pandemic? Good question. I don't know. I haven't looked. Because remember, during the pandemic, you get it like a delayed. picture of it, you know, like going into the <laughs> bath for paint, and then you yeah. get a picture of it done. I know exactly. <laughs> I haven't looked to see if they've been any better photos lately or not. Mm. But I think there's usually at least three or four photos. Do you have customers that are tracking their dreams that are like into that? Um, I think a couple, but not everyone. 
You should, yeah, you should contact the people that are into it and see what kind of images and stuff. See if we how can do often it. they get updates. I think we may even be able to look in our back end too and see if we can see what they're what they're seeing. Oh, I see. Well, okay. yeah, we'll take a look here in a little bit. Yeah, but that's cool. Very good. Something I would recommend for those of you who are interested in a Porsche, do your track my dream. If not, then your <laughs> salesperson, such as myself, will just be updating people kind of as uh, as your car goes through the build process. Mm. So usually w- when you get an allocation, there's some time before it'll freeze. Then there's um, like a build slot. It mm. freezes. Then the car usually like a month later will go into production. Usually it takes about a week for the car to be produced. Right. Then it goes to... Emden, which is the port in Germany, sits there for a while until it finds a little ship to hop onto and then come over to the United States, whether you're in Texas or for us in, on the West Coast, it's either San Diego or Benicia. So there's two different ports here, and then they get dispersed and come to the stores. So And, you, and can't you see that like when it's in the ocean, too? It has like a dot. You can ocean. see it when it's ocean, that's, which is really cool, cool to just track the car. Yeah, it's a pretty cool experience that people can do as they're – building their Porsche. Yeah. And that brings me to another point. Some of you may have been having a car been held at port because of a chip mm-hmm. issue. Last time, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how it was, maybe they were commandeered by the U.S. government. That, in fact, doesn't sound like that was actually the truth. They were just held by Porsche because they quickly found out that their supplier for the chips were being made in Belarus, and that's something that we can't do. So they, quote, unquote, notified the authorities as quick as they found out that that was an issue so it sounds like a lot of those cars are already going through the ports they'll either be fixed at the ports or they'll be fixed here at the dealership but those cars are already going a lot quicker than i think some of us thought which is great speaking of which aren't doing we have like four of them down and that we just got loaded off the truck today we do so they're all custom builds they're coming which is good because i know people have been waiting so yeah speaking of speaking of custom builds i'm going to give mason a plug now if you are interested in building a car mason builds cars just to build cars so, and i'm sure if you've seen his youtube videos he has all kinds of build videos that people love to watch him build because there's so many different options that porsches can be built with and people don't know what's the best option and they offer four different selections of headlights and mm-hmm. some, you know, side window trim and stuff. So if you have a question about building a car, Mason does offer a service that he can build a car for you or work with you to build a car uh, if you want to go through that process. And I think that's the best process. If you're to the level where you can buy your own 911 yeah. to be able to custom build it for sure. the way you want exactly, I think uh, that's got to be the coolest thing ever. I can't wait to be able to do that someday. I agree. Same yeah. with you. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Mike's a big 911 guy, loves manual <laughs> transmissions, which is great. He did, however, drive a Spider, and I think that might have uh, taken his heart, uh, a 718 Spider. So yeah. maybe that beast would be maybe take over the 911. That's the first time he'd ever said that, and I was <laughs> shocked. It depends on the 911. <laughs> I think it depends on the day, too. All depends yeah. on the day. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, chalk. T down there is like, mm, that yeah. was very nice it's looking. It's a nice car. A chalk T. And it's iconic. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there anything else, any other news you wanted to talk about, Mike? I I, I know we haven't had a bunch come out, but. I'm good. I, I think it, so. It was, it's nice always to sit down and jaw, jaw with you. I agree. So thank <laughs> you. Thank you for everyone that's followed our second podcast. We're going to be doing this again twice a month is the plan upgrading our setup and we're really excited to just cover any new Porsche news hopefully we'll be having a 992 here in the very near future getting released so there's Mm -hmm. not too much to talk about here on this podcast but we'll be talking a lot more in the future Mm -hmm. so thanks for watching thank you bye